Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back to talk about my favorite novelettes, short stories, and graphic novels of 2023. I forgot to say in my last video that any rereads that I have done this year are not counted in my favorites on any of my lists. I do use Copile, which was created by G over at Book Roast, and how it works is it actually, when you are doing your rating, calculates it on a 10-point scale, which then gets converted to a 5-point scale, and then a 9 and up on the 10-point scale is a 5, but that means that my numbers are like 9, 9.14, kind of so on like that. So I have them grouped in like their number categories, but really they're not in a specific order of favorite. Starting with the first section, I have the short story in DIY by John Wiswell, and this is a story about a young man who is living in a post-apocalypse world where the air quality isn't good. He wants to become a magician and go to this magical school, but his family can't afford it. So he keeps trying. He makes a friend who is the narrator of the story, actually, and they both start trying to find a way to increase the water supply, which is a big issue in their world. And it's just very cute and heartwarming and does not end the way you think it will. Then I have a Delicious in Dungeon, which I guess is also called Dungeon Meshy. I just learned that the other day, but I've always heard Delicious in Dungeon, Volume 3. And this is where the crew is going into a deeper dungeon and they're starting to get more character growth moments. I'm not going to go too, in too much into it because another volume is also on the list as well. I have Crumbs by Danny Sterling and this was a breath of fresh air. This is about a young witch who is a seer, but she can't see the future. She can see things in the present. And she meets this young man, I forget his name, but he is working in his aunt's bakery. And there's like a huge magical component in the society. There's technology too. It's a very fun mix. And it, this is really a heartwarming love story where characters are learning who they are and growing with one another. I adored it. I have Rat Queens Volume 2. And this is about an irreverent adventuring group, kind of thing D&D, &D, who are dealing with the ramifications from the first novel, and we're starting to get more backstory of the characters. I also have Home Habitat Range Niche Territory by Martha Wells. This is a short story that you can find on Tor.com. This is in the Murderbot series, but it's from the perspective of Mensa, who is dealing with the trauma of having been kept captive by a corporation and she's trying to decide if she wants to go into therapy or not other people would like her to or they're talking about hey would it will help and she's not sure she's trying to figure out how she wants to handle things so next grouping we have delicious and dungeon volume one and this is why i didn't go to, into much of the story information about this series. This series follows a group of adventurers. At the very beginning of this book, the main guy holding the frying pan, his sister gets eaten by a dragon. And so him and her best friend from their original adventuring group want to go save her, but they are out of money. All of their equipment and everything got left behind when they got pulled out of the dungeon. So in order to save money, they are going to be eating monsters along their journey. It's like a comedy of adventures. It's so much fun. You'll see three short stories from this collection, The Alchemy of Sorrow. Here I have A Matter of Trust. This follows a, a man, I would say maybe in his early 30s, who is a like a hired gun. He is escorting a young noblewoman with her two children across a mountain pass to go back to her home. She had been living in exile 
for safety reasons. And so he's been hired to help guard her. He's worked with one of her guards before, but some of the other people that they had to hire, things kind of feel off. It's him learning how to be a trustworthy person, also while thinking about his own past and how he has messed up with relationships. I also picked up the graphic novel series Fence by C.S. Packett, and I have on here Fence Volume 5, which was, I think, the most recent one to come out. The series primarily follows Nick, who is a fencer. He is a child of a really, like an Olympic f fencer, but he's unrecognized. He was born out of wedlock. He goes to this all-boy academy to try to get on their fencing team and meets who he decides is his nemesis, who is another fencer on the team who is very good, very technically good as well. And it's just like a found family story as they're all dealing with the different feelings and emotions. And you get to learn a lot about fencing if you've never heard anything. And then I have another short story from The Alchemy of Sorrow called Death in the Uncanny Valley. It's been a while since I've read this short story collection, but I think this is the one where father reaches out to his son, who is on a spaceship heading to Mars, asking for help with his sister. Their mother has just recently died, and the sister is now in the custody of the father, and she has taken her grief by hiding in a video game and she won't come out. And so the dad is worried, asking the son for help. And the son is exasperated because of family circumstances earlier on in his life. And he has to join the game to help his sister. Just kind of showing how family relationships are rocky and, but you can still give one another support and get closure through different means, even if you weren't sure. And then the last short story I'm going to talk about is also from The Alchemy of Sorrow, and that's Skies on Fire. This is about a phoenix writer who is retiring, being forced to retire. She doesn't know how she feels about this because she thought she was going to die in battle, and she's not. But time and war have not been kind on her body, and she's going through her own grieving process as she tries to figure out what is life going to look like now? And since I live with an ex-soldier, this one hit pretty well home because I see it from the outside. These were my favorite novelettes, short stories, and graphic novels of this year. Have you read any of them? If you have, I'd love to hear your opinion. If you think there are any graphic novels, short stories, or novelettes I should check out, please let me know down below. Thank you, and have a great day!